Hello, everybody, and welcome to the audio only preseason Empire League podcast. I am your commissioner, Andrew Cahill. That's your commissioner, Scott Sprague. Scott, say hello to everybody. Address me as my proper title, please. <laughs> League champion. Yes. And? And king? Commissioner, but I will take king <laughs> and or your highness. <laughs> Your Highness Scott Sprague, that's not going to get old at all. Um, well, as soon as I stop being high. <laughs> welcome to uh, the the preseason podcast. Very excited to be back. Um, obviously, Scott, you did win last year. Obviously. Which, which means that congratulations are in order. Um, have you received the trophy yet? You all know I have. You've seen pictures. Spoon it every night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so cuddle with it. Definitely. Make my cat watch as I caress its gentle curves. We're gonna have to make the trophy, sure that someone not my takes cat's that curves. <laughs> We're definitely gonna have to make sure that somebody steals that um, oh, trophy try. from you. But until then, you are the king of the league. So Goddamn congratulations. Me. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did last year. Probably more, because you didn't have the trophy last year. True. I did not. So, I feel like you probably didn't enjoy it at all. Well, I've, I enjoyed I've, being I've enjoyed the king it. of the league. I've enjoyed it at times, up to four times in a day. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, moving on, thankfully, to some news and notes. Um, one of everybody's favorite subjects, league payment. Uh, we have decided to make an update uh, this year, we're still going to be using League Safe. I uh, fully expect you all to pay before the end of week one. However, um, you will have until week four to make payments, but we encourage you to make those payments as early as possible because if you do not make your payment by the deadline, your team will be locked until payment has been made. Yeah, just um, fucking do it. It's the easiest thing to do. It takes 10 minutes. We're all adults. Uh, but yeah, if you're walking into week four and you're trying to set your night or your lineup before the, the Thursday night football game and you have not paid because you're a degenerate asshole and you're making us chase you down for money, guess what? Your lineup's going to be locked until you pay. So yeah, get your affairs in order and find $20. Yeah, I... I really isn't that hard guys if you have any issues with leak safe you can obviously come to one or both of us and we will you know help you out but just get it done if um, you come to me i will defer you directly to andy because <laughs> i don't want any part of this but uh you know please get get that payment in asap um just a <sighs> reminder we are still doing punishments for coming in last this year so if you come in last during a week, you are expected to make a video or make a payment to the bank. Uh, same rules as last year. And, you know, just fucking do it, guys. Like, I, I it's the same thing as making the, the leak safe payments at the beginning of the year. Just do it. Uh, it's super easy to either make a payment to the bank or um, what we would all prefer is a video. And it, you don't remember, you don't have to drink an alcoholic beverage. You can chug a Sprite. I, I can't even tell you how many like chug Sprite chugging videos milk. I've seen that are hilarious. Um, just or do, do something, something. Or do something else. Write a, yeah. fucking, write a, a sonnet to the league. Totally. Write some poetry. It and it, none of this three-line fucking haiku shit. Like, give me like a proper <laughs> Shakespearean stanza about what this meat league means to you. Yeah, if you want to do something other than chug something, just come to Scott and I, and we will almost certainly say yes, as long as it's not, you know, not harsh enough. Like, oh, I just want to drink a glass of water. No, that's not going to be enough. But, like, otherwise, it's all good. Those are the big announcements uh, for the league this year. Um, so now let's just jump in. Uh, well, first, let's recap the off offseason. Um, we didn't have a ton of activity pre-draft. Um but we did have one trade on draft day before the draft began, uh, began, and that was a Nolan draft. So Nolan kicked us off with um, trading uh, Jalen Waddle to your brother. Nope. And swing. 
reverse that. He, uh, Nolan brings in Jalen Waddle from Jaylen Waddle. Frogs Dogs. Sorry. In yes. exchange for Jamison Williams, Bryce Young, the 104 and, this year, and the 204 this year. Yeah, so obviously Nolan looking to get some actual talent on his team as opposed to just collecting draft picks. Um, we talked about this a ton last year, like what the heck was he going to do with all these draft picks? This was one of the things he did. He decided to make this move. Um, got rid of one of his excessive quarterbacks. Um, you know, all in all, I think – Worked out for both sides, but that was that was our one pre-draft trade. Yeah, and look, Waddle's a terrific player. Uh, props to Nolan for being able to to find a way to peel him out of Eric's hands, who previously said that he would not dream of considering a trade that involved Jalen Waddle, uh, that did not involve at least three first-round picks coming back. Uh, didn't quite get three first-round picks. He did get one, and then he got uh, possibly the worst quarterback I've ever seen, but definitely the worst quarterback I saw last year. And also Jamison Williams, who's played about seven more NFL games in his three year career than I have. Uh, and then of course, a, a second round pick as well. Yes. Um, so, you know, from there draft began and um, things went uh, pretty much according to plan. We're just going to go team by team here, talk about the draft results and, also talk about draft day trades, of which there were many, and some of them were pretty big. So um, we will pick up right there with Nolan, who, once the draft began, did not make any more moves. Um, so he ends up with Marvin Harrison Jr., Brian Thomas Jr., Jalen Wright, and Jalen Polk. Um, I think overall, hard to argue that Nolan had anything but a good draft. Um, got the best player on the board, and got a lot of like high upside wide receivers here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, what is there to say? Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is such a no-brainer for the first overall pick that I was almost certain Nolan was going to overthink it and move on to something else. <laughs> uh, Brian Thomas Jr., also a talent. Uh, the other two, I, you're taking swings there with uh, you know, the RB3 in Miami and Jalen Wright. And then, I mean, he picked two guys named Jalen, and they both spell their name differently. So, that's true. you know, there's diversity there, and that's something special. Uh, but, I mean, if nothing else, he's bringing in Marv. He's bringing in uh, Waddle. Hard yeah. to argue. That's a, that's, and, that's a solid start to your season. And I think ultimately with, with a guy like Jalen Wright, you know, is that the next Devon Achain? He, you know, he had Achain last year. Um, I still has him. But, like, you know, you want a piece of that that Dolphins offense. Um, I think you want a piece of this New England offense a little bit less, but, you know, Polk still has an opportunity to be the number one receiver because they don't have one. Moving down the list uh, to another guy that did not make a draft day trade, and that's Corey. He had two picks. He took two bears. Roma Dunze and Caleb Williams gets his quarterback of the future. If there is a future, everyone remember, if Scott wins... There is no more league. We start over from scratch. So uh, don't make any trades with Scott. Um, back to Corey, Roma Dunze, Caleb Williams. I think these are home runs. It's a If you've got two picks, th I like the idea of stacking. Briggsy did it with his next. We'll talk about him in a second. With You got a couple commanders. Uh, I... Don't know how I feel about Caleb Williams yet. I've seen enough of him in college where he had about 10 to 15 seconds behind the line of scrimmage to literally stand flat on his feet while his receivers would just scramble around and get open, and then he would throw to one of them. That's not going to happen in the NFL. It certainly isn't going to happen on the Chicago Bears. Uh, but he is believed to be that talented. I have been known to be wrong once or twice, and if you're going to get that, uh, might as well get his young stud wide receiver also. Agreed. So, you know, I think ultimately, um, Adunze again, like he's he's a number three in that offense. There's no question, but way more upside than Keenan Allen, certainly in a dynasty league. And then Caleb in the preseason, it's preseason, so we take it with a grain of salt. Has looked exceptional, so. Um, there's a lot of hype around that Bears offense. and If we get three more years out of this league, those could be really, really, really good picks. Uh, agreed. Agreed. I think if anybody but 
um, Scott wins this year, those end up being great picks. You mentioned it, Briggsy stacking a couple of commanders here. He goes Jaden Daniels and uh, Luke McCaffrey. Um, I love Jaden Daniels from a fantasy perspective. I don't know if he's going to be a good real-life quarterback, but at least until um, he's replaced, I think he'll be a good fantasy quarterback. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think he runs, and that's always just a cheat code. Not a lot of great options to throw to which is, makes it even better that he doesn't like throwing as much. Uh, but look, and you got a McCaffrey too. And I can tell you as, you know, someone who has a McCaffrey on their team, that's a good family to have a piece of. Uh, so again, if you have two picks and you can make a stack out of it, that could be something that gets really good over the next couple of years. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think Jaden Daniels has a has a real chance to be in a lot of people's starting lineups by the end of this year, um, no matter who their starting quarterback is right now. So uh, I think that's a really solid draft for Briggsy. Um, that brings us to B. Guider, the domestic terrorist, who ended up with Bo Nix, Ray Davis, and Ben Sinat. Ben Sinat the tight end that I was trying to get my hands on at the three one. So that would be the second time someone sniped a tight end in this draft for me. Um, I think that ultimately this is a really decent draft considering where he was picking, you know, I think like there were no reaches here, but there's also no one who's inspiring. Well, he wasn't in a position in a position to reach. He was at the two ten, last pick of the second round, mm-hmm. and then the last two picks of the third round. So it, he couldn't have really reached very far for anybody. Who knows? Maybe one of them pop off. Bo Nix is going to be playing with his uh, college wide receiver and Ty Franklin. Uh, yep, won the starting job. There's something you know? there, or if not, it's just another able-bodied man that brian can strap a suicide vest to yeah i mean bo Nix is getting a lot of preseason love um i've heard comparisons to drew Brees, which seem insane to me but you know bo Nix, i don't look everyone who listens to this pod uh, all six of you you guys know i don't really watch college football so like i don't know how he bo Nix was at oregon but i know that when Wasn't i was good enough to beat ohio state <laughs> On the few occasions Bitch. that I did I did watch something about college football, people talked about Bo Nix being a Heisman candidate, someone who, you know, had something. There was just, like, a thing that he's got, and, it, and it's like, maybe it translates, maybe it doesn't. Um, you know, will this be the next, uh, I don't know, big, you know, big, like, first-round flameout? You know, is he the Zach Wilson of this draft? Uh, possible, but we'll see. Is he the Bryce Young of this draft? um all right so that brings us to our next person which is is going to be me and this brings us to our first of um you know in in the series that we're going to talk about the trades uh of draft day so there were a number of trades during draft day i was involved in quite a few of them um so we're gonna just talk about what i came into the draft with and what i left the draft with so um I started the draft with the 105 and the 303, and I turned that into <laughs> a twenty-five, a, a third round pick in 2025. George Kittle, Jalen Hyatt, uh, Trey Benson, who I took with the 202, a 2026 second round pick, the gunshot victim himself, Ricky Pearsall, at the 301, Jatavion Sanders at the 307. And Chigakonkwo, who I traded for uh, with Scott. So mm-hmm. that is quite a, a lot of players who came in, as, lo- as well as like future draft assets, from uh, starting with those original uh, pieces. Um, so before I give my opinion on my draft, which, spoiler alert, I like it, what, did, what do you think, Scott? I'm glad that you took Chigakonkwo off my hands. Uh, that was somebody who is definitely going to be dropped, and I'm glad that he didn't. Uh, aside from that, I was trying to get up into that 202 to grab uh, Trey Benson, so that, that stung a little bit. Um, 
Yeah, it was a fine draft. Uh, you got yourself a Plaxico Burris in the making there with Ricky Parcel. Yeah. Uh, and I still am beside myself about this trade that you did to somehow acquire <laughs> George Kittle and a first round pick for a bunch of shit. Well, I, I, I didn't get a first round pick. I got a second round you pick. You gave away but a first like, round pick. Was... I, gave a, I gave away a first round pick. But like, I I definitely feel like, you know, Kittle is a guy that in a dynasty league, I think only has value for maybe this year. Um hopefully next year, Um, which is why I was, like, desperately trying to get Ben Sinat. That was, like, my target. Did you just shotgun blast three tight ends? uh, Yeah, 100%. (laughs) I was, like, I wanted wanted Bowers in in round one. So if not him, you will build him in the aggregate with three other (laughs) tight ends. (laughs) Yeah, so I, I wanted Bowers, and then Bowers got picked, so I was like, okay, I, I didn't feel like taking Sonat at the 202 made sense. And I added the 301. So I was like, I think he'll fall to the 301. There's not really another tight end needy team other than your brother. Um, and so when he went when he went to the domestic terrorist, I, who I was trying to trade with, I was trying to trade up and, and like ensure that I could get him. And he wouldn't make the trade with me. And so at that point I was like I once I lost Bowers I was like okay I need a I need a tight end. So I I, I made the move for Kittle and then I tried to get Sanat as like sort of, sort of future proofing. And so that's how I ended up with uh Okonkwo as like a this year backup <laughs> uh insurance policy and uh Sanders as what I hope is like next year's um starter would you so, like just just to be safe would you like to add isaiah likely right now also <laughs> no okay i would not <laughs> seems like um, your type i know i know i i really was like banking on getting bowers um going into the draft and so when your brother sniped him i was 100 percent in scramble mode trying to like find another tight end solution and um, and instead you found three <laughs> yeah i mean i found three and i think two of them are going to be playable this year but okay. um you know i think i think Have trey benson my weeks <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think trey benson is you know has a chance i was excited about ricky before number one he got shot which obviously put a damper on things sure but um more importantly i was excited when i looked like he was gonna move yes um I think Ricky is at this point the Debo replacement next year. So if the league continues next year, that's when Ricky will get his his chance to really shine. But, you know, we'll see. (laughs) That is is some wishful thinking, stout analysis. Hey, you know what? (laughs) This is is the thought process of of a man who just desperately wants the league to continue. (laughs) I, 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 I decided to get real spicy when we started recording i was not like this when we were doing our pre-production <laughs> <laughs> that's good you gotta say you gotta say i saw the, the red light turned me into a bowl <laughs> seeing that red <laughs> um all right moving on um we will go to johnny cash johnny came into the draft with the one six two six and three six not a big trader but he did make a move with me to move up to the one five and take Jonathan Brooks. That kind of started my, um, you know, dominoes of moving <laughs> your, your every quest pick I for every available tight end. <laughs> yeah. um, and then he kept the two six and the three six, picking up Adonai Mitchell and Jermaine Burton. Um, you know, Johnny is looking for some some young talent, and throw, you know, I think Brooks is definitely more of a dynasty guy than a. Uh, this year kind of play, but Adonai Mitchell, Jermaine Burton, they have a chance to be something. Um, again, I think more future facing than than this year. Yeah, Jonathan Brooks is sweet. Uh, is probably the best running back in the draft. Uh, in fact, I'm near certain that he is. Uh, won't start playing obviously because he's hurt, but in a dynasty league, that is an awesome pick at the 105. Uh, yeah. The other two are just shots at the main. 
You don't believe in Blake Corum? I do not. The Michigan man? <laughs> no. Uh, there's like seven. There's more running backs on that team than tight ends on your team. <laughs> well, we'll get to him in a moment. Um, so we'll go back over to Griff. Uh, Griff is obviously who I made the – Kittle trade with, he came into the draft also not with a lot of, <laughs> having not made a lot of trades, 1-2, two, 2-2, two, two, and 3-2, um, but he did make some big moves, and he left with my 2025 third round pick, Jalen Warren, Tucker Craft to add to his um, Packers tight end stack, because <laughs> he also has Link Musgraves. Um, he traded... <laughs> For Michael Wilson. Does that make you jealous? With you? That he has two tight ends from the very same team. (laughs) Uh, It doesn't, actually. (laughs) Um, That's why I didn't think he would go for my But they're both bad, which makes them even more your type. (laughs) Um, He got Michael Wilson from you in a trade, and then he uh, did draft four players. He ended up with Malik Neighbors uh, with the second overall pick, which as a Giants fan, I have to say, I I love that pick. Um, Xavier Worthy, uh, which he got... At one six in the trade with me, he got JJ McCarthy, aka JJ McKneecaps, um, as Scott calls him, and uh, that was at the two nine. And then he ended up with Kimani Vidal at the three four. And um, you know, I think overall, I, we talked about ta- you know the kind of lack of talent at, on Griff's team. Uh, and the lack of depth on his team. Yeah, well, and I feel like he really addressed that bringing in uh, Tucker Craft and Michael Wilson. I, I mean, okay, as, as like, as, as skeptical as you might want to be, which I understand, Malik Neighbors is like a legit number one wide out. Um, no, he's, he's, on he's a, really good. He's on a terrible offense, but he's, he's a legit number one. And, you know, Xavier Worthy has a chance to be the next Tyreek Hill. You know, I'm not saying he will be, but he has a chance to be. And then Michael Wilson... Michael Wilson's the number two receiver across from Marvin Harrison Jr. In an offense that's going to need to throw the ball every time they touch it. First of so, all, Trey McBride is the second wide receiver on the Arizona Cardinals. I mean, that's true. So he's I, I, the third option and arguably the fourth behind James Conner. Well, James Conner is not, I don't think, going to... I think that he is the third receiving option, but... He did show something at the end of last season, which is one of the reasons you picked him up. Yes. And if more opportunity, you know, not having to go against the number one corner on the opposing defense, like that could lead to a solid, you know, flex season from him. Yeah, but to be fair, he was go he was not the number one option last season. It was Hollywood Brown or whoever the fuck they, I mean, they just exported two wide receivers from Arizona. So he wasn't going against the number one defense last season. So, I I mean, it's, he's a solid depth receiver. Maybe he perks up a little bit. Uh, Yeah. I, I, I I think it was worth the, uh, I think it was worth the trade. It was, yeah, it was a low cost trade to get him. Uh, Yeah. And I was certainly glad that he did. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's move on to Tequila Bob, uh, our favorite Bob. Bob came into the draft with four picks, the 1-7, the 1-9, the 3-1, and the 3-3. Three, three. Mm-hmm. Bob left the draft taking uh, Lad McConkey at the 1-7, Keon Coleman at the 1-9. He then traded uh, with your brother Correct. for... Uh, or and uh, w- yes, he traded with your brother for Blake Corum at the two four, and then he traded his two third round picks to me uh, for a future second round pick, twenty twenty five second round pick. Uh, yeah, I, I mean Blake Corum's trash because he went to Michigan. I think we can all agree on that. There you uh, go. Outside of that, Lad McConkey and Keon Coleman, I don't know if they'll both hit, but I would feel really good walking out of that draft with both of them knowing the odds that one of them do hit. I mean, there's a very easy argument to be made for both of those guys that they are the number one receiver on their team and both have good quarterbacks. Yeah. I mean, you know, 
I'm going to be completely honest. It's just really hard to take a guy seriously whose name is Lad. Lad McConkey, though? I, I mean, come just, on. That's fucking cool. It, it's like a it's like a character out of a 30s movie. It's just like really Sure. Something. I mean, yeah, he can have a little Al Capone accent. That's fine <laughs> if that's if that's where we're taking him. But um, Keon Coleman. I mean, he's going to be catching balls better than Quentin or Quentin Johnson drops them. So what? You know what? What are yeah? I mean, what are we talking I, about here? Are we talking about Lad McConkey being like, you know, the best sort of receiver like, on the team? Yes. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah, he he might be. I mean, Joshua Palmer is still there and has some level of connection with with herbert but yeah i mean mcconkey probably is the some most, level yeah but not a, the most electric option in the passing game yeah um, and so electric that they decided they needed somebody more electric <laughs> and then went out and drafted him <laughs> when uh, they need a no shit I'm, I'm saying lad mcconkey is the ele- is the most electric option yeah in the, in, in, on the team yeah but like so keon coleman i think i think the thing with mcconkey and with coleman is like what we've said about a lot of these guys because I I feel like this draft didn't have a ton of like instant impact guys. It's like these are really solid dynasty like draft picks. So like again, if the dra- if the league continues, I think that we look at this and we're like, you probably have one guy here who's a top twenty receiver at some point in the next two years, and maybe two guys who are in that. I would bet just from volume's sake one of these dudes is a top 20 by the end of this season. Okay. I I couldn't I, tell you which, but I'm just saying I would I would be walking out. I just think Keon Coleman's going to end up being Gabe Davis this year, not Stefan Diggs. Gross. <laughs> um, and, like, Lad McConkey is in an offense that doesn't want to throw the ball. So it's like, No, but they're going to have to because they're not going to be winning. That's like, yeah. I know they so, have 17 running backs on that team, but they're going to need to throw because they won't be winning. So let let me just I I'm not a Michigan hater like you are, um much to your dismay. So I mean, can you What I'll say don't hate them? <laughs> I don't live in Ohio. Um it's not nearly good enough. What what I will say about Blake Corum is that the Rams tend to pick really good running backs and develop them into like fantasy football, like winners. Cam Akers had his, you know, moments. Uh, Gurley was great. And then, I mean, even like Daryl Henderson was not a fantasy winner, but he was like a starter. You, and now Kieran, you can say Kyron it, Williams, whenever you want, you don't have to say yeah. him for last. And, and Kyron is now the, you know, current iteration of that. Can I make and... a counterpoint to Blake Corum's productivity level? Of course. There is not going to be a assistant on the Rams sideline that will tell Blake Corum what the other team's defensive line is about to do before the play happens. And and that is true. Um, that we know it, of. That makes it harder. Um, it does make it harder. And so I think, you know, we'll see. I think that getting quorum at the two four was a smart trade by bob i think that you know anytime you can get a guy on the rams offense who has shown some level of ability um it, it's worth it and like bob clearly believes that because he's made some pickups in uh, free agency as well you know he wants to be a part of the rams offense so i get it um and then adding a, a future second round pick solid um if you didn't believe in any of the guys in the third round so yeah no, no complaints I, I think he did a very good job with his first two picks uh especially i don't know i i feel like those are high percentage guys and then blake Corm is uh trash <laughs> all right um let's finish this off with the sprague brothers so uh your brother came in with the one four two four and two five mm-hmm. um and he ended up leaving the draft with Brock Bowers uh, at the 1-4 and Xavier Leggett at the 2-5. Um, and, uh, you know, he traded the 2-4 to Bob, as previously discussed. And he ended up getting a 25 first-round pick as well. So um, I think, obviously, I was a fan of Bowers. We've 
already gone over that. Um, Leggett's a nice dart throw. A lot of talent, a lot of opportunity in the offense. Terrible quarterback. You know, what are you going to do? I think overall, solid draft by by Sprague. Uh, yeah, I mean, I... Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, just... <laughs> that's that's all I got. So hesitant to be <laughs> to be nice to your brother. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Well, he started it. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> no, uh, Brock... thank you for that deep analysis. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, Brock Bowers is was worth the pick at one hundred and four. Xavier Leggett, he gets to pair with Bryce Young. That I'm not convinced that's going to turn into a good thing, but. You know, I'm not either. What, what do I know? I'm just sitting next to my trophy right now. Uh, <laughs> but walking out with a first round pick next year, you know, he's got depth. I still just, I don't think he got enough for trading Waddle away. Uh, and I think, I think he's going to be disappointed by that. Yeah, I think that's, that's a, a very hole that Xavier Leggett is not filling. I definitely think that's a reasonable take. You know, I think that. Goddamn right um... it is. <laughs> Uh, but you know we'll see. Maybe the the Dallas Cowboys stack comes through once again. Um, all right, let's finish it off with uh, yeah, the King of the Hill matters. here. Um, Scott, you came into the draft with the two seven and the three four. Yeah, and I left with a lot more than that, didn't I? <laughs> you did. You left with Marshawn Lloyd at the two seven. Yep. Troy Franklin at the three two. That's from a trade with Griffin. Yep. Roman Wilson at the 3-3. Three, three. That was a trade with me. Mm-hmm. And you also left with a 2025 third from, a tr- from me and a 2025 third from Griffin. Yeah, I knew I wouldn't be drafting high. There was plenty of people I wanted. Uh, Bob was was teasing my nips the entire draft, trying to get me to trade for uh, Lad <laughs> McConkey and or Keon Coleman. He knew I liked him. Uh, I offered him very reasonable well-adjusted uh trades that were good values for both teams he countered with horseshit uh so i knew i wasn't getting up into that first round so my i kind of pivoted to a plan of i'm just going to take as many bites at the apple as i can Mm -hmm. i think marshawn lloyd is going to i mean they had aj Dillon in green bay and he's going to be out for the season uh josh jacobs is coming off his least efficient season of his career and they, you know, moved to get this Marshawn Lloyd, who is a really explosive back. Some were calling him uh, as good or better than Jonathan Brooks, uh, but he does have a little bit of a, a problem with the dropsies. Uh, so, so I'm hoping not to see that, but I feel like he's going to get work in a rookie season as a running back, which is huge. Uh, and then Troy Franklin, that was 100%. Maybe he just has the chemistry with Bo Nix. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping for that. Uh, but... You know, and I know that he runs. Uh, unlike the turtle Franklin, uh, he's he's really fast. And then Roman Wilson, that was just about that. That pick had everything to do with the fact that the Steelers have a tendency with these late round uh, wide receiver picks that seem to always turn into Randall L and Antonio Brown and I mean they just they keep hitting on these late round wide receivers so I'm I who knows if Roman Wilson will be one of those probably not because he went to Michigan so he's fucking trash uh (laughs) but if he hits them you know I I got it and really the the big win of the draft for me was trading away two players that were kind of on my roster bubble in uh in Chigakonkwo and Michael Wilson and getting two third round picks for next year. So regardless of how this goes, uh, I, I might actually walk into a draft with assets to play with uh, as opposed to, I mean, you guys know what I do with draft picks. I fucking trade them away. I trade them all away. And then I yeah, sit in the draft yeah. and I'm sad that I can't, that I can't pick anybody. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I, I feel like I hedged my future a little bit and, and got myself some assets for next year should they be needed. Uh, and I got a couple, you know, I got three people that all, you can make an argument for them hitting. And really, I, my roster really needs one of them to hit and really only just mm. one of them. Yeah, well, you know, I think that um, I think you summed it up pretty well. I mean, I think you have a pretty good sense of like what your draft was, and like Marshawn Lloyd, 
is, I think for this year, certainly the highest ceiling um, guy, but I, I think it's like a pretty solid draft considering where you were drafting and to come out with two third round picks uh, for next year, which we all know will end up packaged in like 17 different trade offers. Oh, they've already been shit. a part of multiple <laughs> offers. <laughs> so, you know, um, looking forward to seeing who ends up with those picks in the future. Uh, but that is that was the draft. You know, we there were a lot of moves, a lot of moves, um, people moving back. We, we looked through the draft board, um, including draft pick trades that were made before the draft, like during last season and beyond. Only eight people actually made their original pick in this draft, which is crazy. It made uh, keeping track of all this like really complicated. But um, loved it. That you know, it means it's a really active league, and and people yeah. are uh, are making and not just trading for the sake of trading. Uh, yeah, which making of course, moves. Nolan is doing, but everyone else <laughs> seems to be making like these nice calculated moves, and and we're seeing a lot of action in the league, which is exactly what we were hoping when we set this up. Definitely. And, and speaking of Nolan making moves, let's go into some of the free agency stuff that's happened since the draft. Uh, Nolan has been the most active on the waiver wire, um, adding rookies and then dropping rookies uh, to add more rookies. So um, he ended up, uh, you know, adding as of the uh, of this recording, um, Jalen McMillan, who is a rookie for the Buccaneers. And um, I don't know, this kid Estime, I don't know anything about him. So, um, but that's no, who he's ended just, up with. Every time I hear his name, it just reminds me of the shampoo Estime Lauder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, team name? Could be. I mean, that's that's up to Nolan. You're going to have to talk him out of his uh, Moto Pan- Panakeka. <laughs> we, are, we are hitting 730 here on the West Coast, which means that I just started a fantasy draft, so uh, I will live update as long as we record. Uh, I am picking 10th in a 10-team 10, 10 draft, so we'll okay. see what I get right. at the turn. Um, going back to the, our, our actual league, um, Bob was also active in free agency, picking up Gardner Minshew for some reason, and Deontay Foreman, who I think just got dropped. Um, and then in... Easily the funniest, like, move. Uh, Bob, just desperate to stay involved in the Rams offense, drops Demarcus Robinson, who he picked up last year, for Jordan Whittington, the new Demarcus Robinson. <laughs> he's, so. he's trying to replicate what I found last year before the season had started after the draft. I picked up on a whim Puka Nakua and Kieran Williams. You know, God tell me that was the two luckiest pickups I could have made before the season started. He's trying desperately to do that. And instead of the fifth round wide receiver in Puka Nakua, he found the sixth round and figured that has to be even better in Jordan yeah. Huntington. So just, just, just praying. Um, Corey uh, picked up two guys, uh, Greg Dorch and Antonio Gibson, Yep. who will not make it into his starting lineup if things go according to plan for him. Things would have uh, to go oh, <laughs> so wrong. This is not great for Greg so Dorch wrong. to be a featured player in his lineup. <laughs> All right, that brings us to Griffin. Griffin's actually made some interesting moves here. So Griffin added Dowdle from Dallas. I think it's a dart worth throwing. You know, they're pretty heavily depending on Zeke to be good and like, be able to take a starting role uh, and like a, a workhorse role. I think Dowdle is at least going to be Tony Pollard from a couple of years ago, which makes him like a flex borderline RB two. So I, I don't know. It could, it could be something. Um, well, first of all, Ezekiel Elliott will always be a national treasure. Uh, he is a goddamn stallion, but okay. he yeah. is, he's, he's, he's getting a little older and, you know, maybe, maybe Dowdle, uh, is the the second punch of that one two punch uh you know and yeah. I, I think zeke will be more of a like red zone guy and maybe dowdle is the between the 20s guy uh but still if any, yeah. if something happened to either one of them all of a sudden the other one's going to be a superstar so yeah. i think uh even though you did spell his name wrong in the show doc i think that uh i didn't 
What? Yeah. Uh, you put him in the show doc. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> shush. <laughs> Focus on your draft, honey. Okay. Uh, then he picks up Bucky Irving, who is basically the same thing, but to Rashad White. And again, you have two aging running backs, and he's just trying to creep in and grab their uh, their younger counterparts. And it's not a bad move. Uh, you know, and if you have the roster space uh, to do it on your bench, why not? This is yeah. the season to start throwing darts like that. I mean, Rashad White last year, I mean, if you've listened to literally any fantasy football podcast, they'll say, you know, he was just the king of volume, right? He wasn't efficient. He wasn't even very good. Um, but he just got so much, so many opportunities that he made it work. Um there's no reason that Bucky Irving couldn't take that job. So uh, maybe he's the next Rashad White, and Rashad White, the actual Rashad White, gets benched for for him. Um, but then the, the the last guy that Griff picked up is Baker, who uh, dropping Russell Wilson, who um, you know, it's a good drop, man. Yeah, it's a great drop. Uh, <laughs> shocked that he was rostered. Another half of that equation in Justin Fields, drop a move. <laughs> yeah so so picked up baker and you know griffin last year you know was riding the justin herbert train at quarterback and and that obviously you know we just talked about lab mcconkey being the best wide receiver there which isn't necessarily the best sign for the chargers passing offense so it's possible that baker ends up being the better fantasy quarterback this year and might start for griffin so i think it's a really solid pickup and he got him for essentially free. So I, I think it's like a pretty solid pickup for a guy who really needed a uh, another option at quarterback. Yeah, I mean, Russ might play half the season. I don't know if you'll want to play him at all on your fantasy team. At least Baker. I mean, it's a very vanilla pick, but as a backup or like a – it's hard to call him a 1A, 1B with with – Herbert, because I don't think either of them are going to be really good. But it's like a a two A two P with with Baker and Herbert. Uh, They're both better than Russ, so it's probably an easy decision for him when he was looking at Baker Mayfield on the waiver wire. Yeah, definitely. Um, Before we move on to my pickup uh, in free agency, I will give you an update on my current draft. Oh yeah, Um, let's hear it. Picking picking tenth, I just picked Jonathan Taylor. And in, with the first pick of the second round, I picked Saquon Barkley. So um, stacking my running backs. Okay. High T. Let's get it. Um, all right. So speaking of running backs being on my team, I went out and I got the $69 million man, as he is called on this podcast. Um, but, you know, Jaleel McLaughlin – you know, it's pretty much just hoping that the Javante hype train that, you know, oh, it's the second year coming off the ACL, like, this is when he's going to be back, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm basically fingers crossed that that doesn't happen um, and that Jaleel ends up getting some run. You know, there's been rumors that, that that's more of a committee, and so when there, you have a committee like that, one injury and somebody like really popping could turn into, you know, a flex, you know, RB two kind of range, low end RB two, but that's sort of the, the only thought process there. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me that you didn't have a lot of thought process behind your decisions. Uh, but (laughs) I, yeah, I think that's reasonable. I think you're going to be frustrated when they're both playing because they're both going to be fine, but neither of them are going to be good. And then, but if something should happen to Javante, who of course has, you know, huge injury history, uh, if more of that work starts going towards McLaughlin, uh, I, I, then at least then he could become an option for you. Yeah. You know, it's a back, back of the bench kind of thing. Like we'll see what happens. Um, that, that offense doesn't give me a lot of excitement, but you know, you never know. All right, so in one of the biggest moves of free agency. Yeah, let's take a moment of silence for Hendon Hooker. Yeah, who was just Hendon released Hooker gets dropped. After after two seasons in this league, has not made a start yet in the fantasy league, uh, but B. Guider finally found ways, or found a way to uh, to part himself with Hendon Hooker. 
I personally have seen him tagged on more trades than I I would be more likely to do the trade if he was not included. Like I, I <laughs> aside from seeing him constantly on Beguider's bench, I haven't heard Hendon Hooker's name in probably three years. The fuck was he doing on your team, man? Like there there have been <laughs> and like you picked up Matt Stafford. That's that's the headline here is you got Matt yeah, Stafford. Solid Hendon solid Hooker. pickup. Solid you pickup. could have done this a year and a half ago. Pro- multiple times. <laughs> For all sorts of different people. <laughs> Yeah. Like there's you've had, there have been options aplenty out there. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, what you do in your free time is between you and Jesus if you get down <laughs> with the hookers, but my God, I have some self respect when you looked at that roster for two full seasons and you're like, nah, this this is the guy. Well, he was not the guy. Yeah. It was not the guy. He was, was not, not the, the guy. guy. Big big news, and then hooker. Finally, a free agent. So if you're anyone is available waiting. to pick him up, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's fair waiting. game, guys. Scramble to your waiver wires now. <laughs> Dump the fan. Um, you don't yeah. want a cheap hooker. Throw all your <laughs> no. money on it. I I need a new sixty nine million tip. dollar man. <laughs> um. All right. So that brings us to the final free agent move of the off season, which brings us up to today, and that is Jordan Mason being picked up by Sprague. Um, pick <laughs> great pickup. Um, definitely, whoever has CMC should probably have looked into this, don't you think, Scott? Yeah, uh, yeah, that was a good pickup. <laughs> yeah. So Elijah Mitchell <laughs> I, I got been... put on IR today. Not today. Uh, or it was a couple or, days ago. Yeah, earlier this week, I should say. And Eric like, has. and so he goes out. He gets Jordan Mason, who. Yeah essentially becomes the backup and would become CMC if CMC got hurt. For, well, pump the brakes there. He's not becoming CMC. Nobody in terms of CMC. volume. In terms of volume. Oh, no, because then it's going to be more work for Diva. Like, he's going to be very good. Let's not... Yeah. Don't, don't start throwing out accusations. Listen, like man, just because you missed the opportunity... CMC, there's only one other person on this planet that can turn into CMC, and his name is Luke McCaffrey because it's a genetic <laughs> fucking thing. Uh, but yeah, so that that is the last pickup of the off season. That is Jordan Mason. Um, I think it's a solid pickup. Um, you know, very much an insurance policy on CMC going down, and hopefully, you know, at that point, Jordan Mason would become playable. Um, playable, but that not the next CMC. <laughs> that I, yeah, that... I, I was staring at him. Uh, on the waiver wire and then i was quickly reminded by a sleeper that i was <laughs> was and still am two people over the roster limit and i have been trying fruitlessly to try to trade consolidate players away uh so i still got about 36 hours to figure that out <laughs> yeah best of luck by the time by the time the Thursday game starts, hopefully you've figured out who you're going to drop because nobody should be making trades with Scott. If you want your team to be better. <laughs> but that is it. That is the that is the offseason recap. Um, you know, looking forward, I I think we have a really good year on our hands. Like, you know, last year, you know, you were coming in with you know, once Kieran and Puka turned into Kieran and Puka, yep. your team was never looked back. Yeah, pretty pretty much a, a steamroller. Um, but with with that being said, like Justin Jefferson, still great individually, but has Sam Darnold throwing him the football. Um, so who knows what happens there? You know, still got Tyreek, still got CMC. Uh, still have basically the entire first round of every draft that's happening right now. Correct. But, um, you know, there's at least a crack in the armor uh, that someone could exploit. And and as we all know with fantasy football, every team is one injury away from being in dire need. So, yes, you know. But um, I will remind you that I had all of the injuries last season and still smoked you guys. Well, you know what? That's just annoying because it's true but all right with that scott you have anything else that you want to say before we sign off and let everyone uh get ready for this upcoming season pay your motherfucking league dues uh 
full stop, period. And honestly, I am still like beside myself that we're doing this fucking podcast again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on that wonderful note, I hope you guys have enjoyed this, and we I look hope you forward. Didn't so we can stop. <laughs> it's a stupid <laughs> podcast. It's a great it's podcast. Really, it's really dumb. It, <laughs> it's a waste of my time and yours. <laughs> Well, I have a good time doing it, so I'm gonna keep doing it, even if I have to go at it alone. But oh, it'd for be so much worse. For Scott, I'm Andy. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. <laughs> Champion Scott. <laughs> Till my, till my, till my